Okay, so it's so you've got a little time. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Bruce, this is what the camera looks like. So everyone needs to be in those four spots. I do speak up. Morning, sorry. I think it's time to come pick up. I have no idea how to uh, zoom once it's going. Good morning, White Rock Democrats. Ready to get started with the forum here. We're ready to proceed. We traditionally start out these meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, my name is Bruce Anton. I'm the vice president of this club. I'm filling in for Charlie Gehring, who was the, the president but who could not be here this morning. Uh, we tr traditionally let the candidates uh, introduce themselves. However, I promised the people in the forum that we would expedite this because they all have other matters. And so we will, we will take care of club business and the introduction of other candidates at the end of the meeting. Um, just so everybody knows, I uh, in inviting the uh, people to the forum, the candidates, and uh, we had a pretty good response. Um, I sent them out a couple of questions to be prepared for, and then time permitting, at the end of the presentations, uh, we, we, may, we may be able to take some uh, questions uh, from the audience. Uh, we're going to go in terms of places. The first two candidates are from place two. They will be followed by the candidates from place nine, followed by place 10, and finally ending up with place 14. Uh, so at the, at, at the start, I want to give each candidate a uh, couple minutes to introduce themselves, starting with Ms. Barr. Hi there, my name is... You might want to use the microphone. And uh, if you could, we're, we're, li we're live on Zoom. So uh, be mindful of the camera here. If that you can use this one, that one's not working. Hi there, my name is Sufi Kaur, and uh, I live in UT Southwest in Medical District. I bought the house uh, with my life savings, my retirement savings, and um, um, in 2019, and experienced a uh, lot of uh, drug activity and panhandling and targeted, uh, um, and that's specifically to the homeowners and the business owners. And what I noticed that those are just the safe havens uh, to buy, use, and sell drugs uh, because code compliance, they are the city, everything from the bottom to the top are looking the other way. Uh, they, these are the historically un underserved neighborhoods. And I've been involved in uh, making the area safer uh, by calling city, I have uh, a police, and I have called over 100 times to the 311 and to the police. 
to uh, enforce the code, check the license on the neighborhood um, stores, whether they have liquor license or it's just the board, and they are doing parking lot parties, selling, having um, drug parties uh, 24 seven because um, alleys and underpasses are not cleaned. Um, their bug trash does not get picked up for months and years, and nobody seems to know that it's happening. It's not far from the deep column, and it's right uh, within um, half a mile of children's hospital, major hospital, major universities. So that is very, very disturbing. Everything that is improvement on the streets and sidewalk is only by the private um investment not by the city and um any repair if that's happening where the money is being spent so that is also very concerning so um it's a part of the city that i've been uh, working to improve their historically um underserved neighborhood primarily black and latin neighborhood everybody talk about uh, where the crime happened it happened because of oversight, because uh, uh, city employees or anybody in the city from the top, uh, bottom to the top looked the other way. So I've been working to improve it. It's made me um, to do more for not only my neighborhood, but the people of Dallas, uh, because wherever I go, I if I see some encampment like Katie's Trail underpass, there are so many encampments. Basically, they are drug buy, use, sell, um, safe havens. So it's similarly uh, uh, under bridges like Stimmons, um, Inwood, and Medical District, and all other places. So uh, that's how I got involved in the politics. I am funding by my own money from my own savings. I have not started a fundraiser as yet because I'm deeply involved in it. This is something I do on my off time for my regular job, which I work at the airline for 21 years. Thank you. Um, Jesse Moreno. Good morning. There you go. Uh, my name is Jesse Moreno. I am the current council member for the city of Dallas for District 2. First of all, thank you all for being here with us this beautiful morning. It's great to see so many Democrats in the audience and friends and new faces that I have not had an opportunity to meet with yet. Um, I am a third generation Dallas, East Dallas site. I'm a small business owner, graduated through our public school systems through the Woodrow feeder pattern. And congratulations to the other Wildcats, Lake Highlands Wildcats, on their uh, most recent victories. The um, reason I'm running is because I want to continue uh, the progress that we've been able to do in the city of Dallas, not just District 2. Dallas has been good to me and my family for generations. And I want to be able to do that same thing for the families that have not had those same opportunities. Ever since I was a kid, I knew that I wanted to serve my public uh, in my public capacity. Was at Woodrow Wilson, where I attended uh, high school, I had the opportunity to serve on the Dallas Youth Commission because I knew it was important for me to make policy changes as a, as a youngster and not inherit our, our city later down the road and face those challenges. Later, I had the opportunity to most recently served on the Dallas Park Board for seven and a half years as a vice chairman of, of that uh, civic organization. We brought more green spaces to our downtown areas, expanded our trail network, ensuring that we have green spaces for future generations. My wife and I are now raising our five-year-old in the same neighborhood that I grew up in, and she too will be a future wildcat. And so some of the uh, progress that we have made is, is public safety. We've come a long way in the past two years we funded our DPD officers, an additional 250 officers each year consecutively. Uh, that's why I have uh, earned the endorsement of the Dallas Police Association and the Fire Association. I want to be able to continue the growth that we've had around economic development. District 2 holds the most permits being pulled throughout the district, and I want to continue that progress along the hospital district. We have a new uh, partnership with Children's and Southwestern Medical Center. Where we're going to really be focusing on uh, mental health. We, we all know that we have our struggles and challenges with it comes to our, our homeless population. And yet we have a long way to go, but we have achieved a lot and we have a lot to be proud of. 
That's why HUD at the federal government has selected Dallas and continues to fund the programs that we're doing because they see the progress that we are doing. Housing is going to be our biggest challenge, and I'll talk a little bit about that when we get in, into those specific questions. But I want to thank everyone for giving me the opportunity for being here this morning. Um, I do have my phone number and all my literature, so if you have any additional questions or comments, I hope you visit our website and give me a call personally. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, and by the way, our Sergeant Arms, you know, Tim Sexton's here with the time cards, and he is a strict enforcer. <laughs> so when the when the third minute is up, I expect him to get up and make a fuss. Um, we'll start out. The first question is that, as we've heard already, every candidate has got items of concern they seek the city to address, but all solutions have costs. And my question to each candidate would be, how would you reprioritize the budget to achieve the goals that you want? Well, I'm not sure this mic is working. It's working. All right. So the question is, how would you reprioritize re the budget to address the issues that you have concerns about? So I would uh, be uh, for transparency. Every penny that is being spent by the city, either to increase the pay or for the builders who are repairing your streets and all that, it must be posted on the website. Because I see that there is a corruption um, from the city, within the city, and from an, an oversight, uh, court compliance just come for the walk. They do not take report for months and years. Well, uh, sanitation department does not pick up trash for months and a year, but they are scheduled to do it every month. So that is first thing, the efficiency and how the employees are performing. That is one thing, and they, it should be posted on the website. If the contract is given just now before election for $100 million to repair the streets and pick up all kinds of stuff, it should be posted that how the builders have spent the money, what street they have repaired, what alley, what underpass they have repaired, because what I've been observing uh, that most of the repairs of the uh, uh, sidewalk and all is done by the private money. Like UT Southwestern has improved the neighborhood. Most of the city work is dismissal. It seems like they just come for the walk in the park and they come again and again and again. You have to call a hundred times. You can uh, pick up, uh, pull up on the public records. The reports I have filed with the city by calling 311. Now, how many times I have to do that? That is the taxpayer's money. Each time I'm, uh, an employee is coming, court compliance employee is coming, or city police officer is coming, and they're not writing any report, they're not taking name, they're not checking ID, that is waste of public money. And a uh, one mile stretch within my. Um, so I uh, the, there is a one mile stretch on um, 183 East when I come from my work and I turn to my house that has been getting repaired for over one year and if you go drive on that road it is still as if somebody has scrubbed on it so that is taxpayer money getting wasted that builders should be. Um, they should disclose which street they have repaired for compliance, should uh, report first visit, police officer should report first visit, that who they talk to, what their ID they see, because that's all waste of taxpayers' money. Mr. Moreno, how would you reprioritize the city budget to address the concerns that you have? Thank you for the question. So my number one concern um, I, for my district, and I think it's the city as a whole, as well as housing, we need to ensure that we have safe, affordable housing for everyone. We never want to cut services that we are currently have. We don't want to cut hours at our recreation centers. We want to expand hours at, uh, at our libraries. So we have to be creative. We have to come up with new ideas. And some of those are through the mixed income housing bonus, uh, working with our public-private partnerships, such as LIHTC projects, to ensure that we're having um, adequate housing. Our uh, residents who invested their entire lives in the city of Dallas deserve to be able to age in place. We need to make sure that we have taxes where people can stay in their homes. We need to make sure that we're working with our 
our uh, nursing facilities such as Julia Fowler Homes, uh, and, and that they are carving out portions to make sure that those neighbors that are most adjacent have the first opportunity to live in those communities that they've invested their entire lives. We have a partnership with the Resource Center that will soon be opening up uh, a first aid, first class opportunity for senior housing. And so uh, I'm not uh, going to be cutting any services that are going to affect the quality of life. We have to be more creative and we have to become more efficient with those dollars. And it's going to take those public private partnerships to achieve those goals. Thank you. All right, the next question for the candidates. Um, there's been a variety of complaints in the city, I think you've all seen, about the slowness in the permitting process, crime, food deserts, homelessness, short-term rental regulations, oversight. And there's a, there's a number of disputes between the mayor's office, the city council, and the city manager. So I would ask each staff member, each, each candidate rather, in what specific areas do you disagree with the current city manager and staff? So I've never worked at the city, but I have experienced the other end of it. I see the efficiency, as I mentioned before. You have to call a hundred times before your bulk trash is picked up. If just picked up, the day my ballot was official, I was walking out of the city hall. I received a call from a city employee, and she said, Ms. Core, your complaint about Inwood and Stimmen about bulk trash and pamphlet handling, we did an inspection and we saw there is no panhandlers and there is no bulk trash. So it took almost two and a half years to that Inwood and Stephen need to be cleaned up. So efficiency, how the reporting is done, and the city hall corruption, uh, every, every dollar that's spent should be reported. It is a uh, very high black and uh, Latin neighborhood where I am. But the dry activity is so high because uh, the neighborhood store liquorices, which they never had it, but they were running parking lot parties for years and years and years. And they were doing uh, drinking parties and behind the house, uh, the, the, uh, um, the, high, uh, the vegetation you call, uh, it was so high, the shrubs were never cut. So those all these shrubs in the alley in that neighborhood has become safe havens for drug buy and use for the young people. They would come buy drugs from the store or behind the store somebody was running because code compliance would not come and see. So I highly disagree how the uh, city is being run and how the reporting is being done because they just come for the walk in the park most of the time. There is no system where they would be, uh, it's not efficient system. And I've been to the permit uh, to get my own permit for my own house. And it, it, one person uh, is saying something else. And when you call that person is saying something else. So the city hall website should say, um, uh, it should be all transparent that this permit is for this, this term permit should be if you do this. So permitting definitely need a lot of uh, efficiency and, uh, and it need full disclosure to for all public to see anybody from homeowner to the builder, not just somebody who has friends with the mayor or the council person, but the people like me who have bought the house from their retirement savings. And, and other people who are cleaning people's home, they should have access to all the permit information. They don't have to go run around and around to the permit clerk and disagree different thing and then their things didn't get built. So. <clears throat> Mr. Moreno, what issues do you have? Do you have particular disagreement with city management administration? Thank you. As an experienced civic leader, I know that when people of common good come together, great things can happen. The two things that I would work on is customer service and expediency. Um, coming from the small uh, business world, I know that sometimes at City Hall, bureaucracy gets in front of us and, and we don't like the timeline. We all wish things could move um, at a faster rate. But those are the two things that I would uh, highlight as uh, uh, characteristics that we can continue improving on. And that's why 
I have uh, meet with our city manager regularly to ensure that he knows what my district's priorities are. And I know that he and I are in sync with that. And we are uh, ensuring that uh, we are moving forward with those uh, needs that are from district two and across the entire city of Dallas. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, I'd ask the candidates, uh, what, what are the issues of your special concern where you're in place to running for uh, that part of representation? What specific issues are you concerned about for the people in place too? So in District 2, it's, I have experienced in my neighborhood from last three years, since 2019, and now on my campaign trail, I'm going to different neighborhoods. And it's a similar story I'm listening that uh, of the public safety, that is a lot of uh, narcotic drugs in their backyards, uh, in the neighborhood homes, in the alleys, in the underpasses. So public safety, drug control, narcotics is at the very high and how the police and this, uh, the core compliance who come and check on the people who are homeless how they are being, because they have been sitting there for year and year, there are people being bought by the young men and women. They are probably targeted of human trafficking. They are being blackmailed for some reason. I have personally spoken with young men and women standing at the intersection for the last three years. I have said, hey, you are like my niece. You're like my nephew. Why are you here? Why don't you walk just a mile from here and get a job? You were in such a good shape. And they told me that, no, I cannot do that. They have everything. I'm going to get killed. I have to pay somebody $1,500. So this is a very, very serious issue. I've gone to Arl Trotten uh, and Winslow, where Mr. Marino went to the school nearby, Woodrow Wilson. It's the same story I have heard from the business owners and the residents. They say it's a very, very rough area. We are very, very scared about it. They get uh, a bully to give them money. The random people, because they have to pay somebody drug money, either to buy the drugs or to pay them. So narcotic, public safety, crime handling, uh, either people who are standing at the intersection, they are being blackmailed, coerced to stand there. Because I see people who stand in the intersection, they walk past my house. And there is somebody who is older than these young boys and girls who walk them. And the next thing I know, they are standing at the intersection at the medical district. And I, I asked them, hey, you walk right past my house. You live in the neighborhood. Somebody is helping you. Why are you here? So their answer was, I have to pay somebody $1,500. So there is a crime is very serious thing. It's creeping in people's neighborhood homes. If you go to Maple Springs Boulevard, you, Mr. Marino was there on the safety meeting. Uh, it's, it's the same story. It's happening in your neighborhood homes. It's not only happening in the apartment complexes, as uh, was mentioned before. Just a few a couple of days ago, police chief, Mr. Um, Garcia, has uh, was in a conference that crime is very, very high. So, my concern will be public safety, public education, and awareness. And thank you, Mr. Moreno. What issues are, are of particular interest in place too for you? Sure. So, uh, some of the biggest issues in District Two are from prior um, years, and that was that the CBD has been the sole concentration for our resource centers for our. Uh, resources that help with our unhoused population. And so that has been targeted all in the CBD area. And so what we're trying to do now is making sure that all our resources are spread out through the entire district. We see this at the hospital district where patients are released and have nowhere to go. And that's why through the homeless and housing solutions program and initiatives, we're working on rehabbing an old hospital and apartment to make sure that we have aftercare for those patients so that they aren't just released from the hospitals with nowhere to go. And so those are some of the efforts that we're going to continue working with. Uh, public safety, again, happy to have the support from the Dallas Police Association, happy to report that we have fully funded our first responders. We're making sure that they have all the resources that they need. Um, economic development, uh, again, with the permitting process, uh, we have gotten a lot better. There's still some work to be done. 
but District 2, you'll see, has a major uh, uh, bunch of those uh, permits being pulled because people want to continue to investigate District 2 because they see the great things that are happening in our district. When it comes to education, I'm happy to have the support and endorsement from our local ISD uh, current and former trustees. As a parent of uh, public education, I want to make sure that our schools um, are safe, making sure that uh, when I drop off my five-year-old each and every morning, that I am going to ensure that she is safe when I pick her up each and every single day, that they're having the best education possible. Parks, as a former park member, again, my investment for Parks and Trail speaks for themselves. Um, in the environment, uh, uh, endorsed by the Sierra Club, making sure that we're investing for great spaces uh, for generations to come. Again, thank you all so much for the opportunity to giving me. Uh, my phone number is on all my literature. I hope that if I did not answer one of your questions or you need me to elaborate on something, that you'll have the opportunity to reach out to me. Look forward to knocking on your door soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. <laughs> The uh, next race is place nine. Uh, I know that uh, Kendra Madison was invited. I have not heard from her today. So I guess mm -hmm. this is all is for him. Uh, Do I get mic one or mic two? You can have both mics. I can have both. Okay. Go ahead and introduce yourself. So help. Is this, is this one on? This one's on for sure. Let me get this one. That's good. This one, yes. Hello, I am Paula Blackman, and I am running for District 9. This is my second term I'll be completing, and I'm seeking my third term. I have three boys that were born and raised here in East Dallas, and i married, been married to my husband. Gosh, we were counting almost 30 years. So uh, we love East Dallas. East Dallas is our home. East Dallas is where we, uh, you know, hang out with our friends, and um, we are very fortunate to be a resident of East Dallas. With that being said, we have great quality of life. Um, we're working to dredge Rock Rock Lake, maintain a public park, as well as your neighborhood parks. Because what we found coming out of the pandemic were people wanted their open space. They wanted to be connected. They wanted to meet in a, in a setting that was uh, non-traditional. And usually the parks, people will meet and go for, continue their runs, continue their bikes. So even those individuals that did it before, they continue, they started it during the pandemic. What we've also seen is um, a great quality of life regarding crime. Crime has been going down in our, in our district. Uh, just got the uh, records the other day and we are trending downward. Does it mean that there's not room for growth? So we are seeing people, um, cars being broken into, we are seeing uh, cars being stolen. So make sure you lock your car, make sure that you put away those uh, valuables because um, we have to do our own to help our police department. And then thirdly, um, been working on our property tax. Um, what we've seen, and I know we've talked to many of you that property taxes and evaluations are going up. What we can control is that property tax rate. And we had one of the biggest cuts this last go around. We didn't cut services, but we did cut the tax rate. And what we feel or how I feel is if you have a little bit more money in your pocket, you're going to go out and spend it. You're going to grab breakfast. You're going to go shopping. And that's what we want. We want economies to happen. We don't want to, uh, to individuals not to be able to share in uh, going out and being with each other. So um, this is my third, I'll be, I'm running for my third term. I love my job and I want to continue it. Thank you. Um, Tim, I'm sorry, I wasn't even looking. <laughs> You're well with it. Okay. okay. Uh, so the first question I have um, to ask the other candidates is, um, you know, all, the, all these problems you've highlighted, crime, homelessness, they all cost money. Uh, so what, what would you reprioritize? Because we don't, obviously we don't have open coffers. What would you reprioritize so that they can address the city can address your concerns? Well, um, having worked at City Hall for a while, uh, we've been going, I know the budgets. And so uh, usually there is a pot of money that the city manager does stash away, and it's usually stashed in some random uh, department. 
And so that's where I found dredging money to go after the feasibility study. That's where I looked for money to get a master plan at White Rock Lake. And so with that being said, it is prioritizing hit the dollars that he has put away in order to get the things done that we want. I did question this last go around, our, we grew as far as FTEs, our, our uh, staffing. And there is a time when those FTEs are going to have to be cut because we can't afford it. And so that is what I'm looking at is does the FTEs that we have, the people that we're hired, are they getting what we need done? Because we do have uh, more services are needed around homelessness. Uh, we're needing more cleanups in our parks. Um, our streets, I will tell you, D9 is one of the worst. It has come, it is, we've now started trending downward. And that is a concern. And I've said we either have to do it through our bond that we want to do in 2024 or through our general fund coming up. Because uh, as Jesse knows, because we're the inner city, the inner parts of it, people travel our streets twice as much. And so we have to focus on that. Alleyways, um, working on, because a lot of homes do have back alleys. What does that look like? How do we get those alleys fixed? Do those alleys get fixed? Because it's not your car that's ripping up the alley. It's our sanitation trucks. Can we say, hey, can you put your trash in the front and you get extra points in the scoring system to get your alley fixed? So we have to look at things in, in a way that um, is an ROI because we it is an investment. So we need to look, are we going to get that return on investment? But we also have to be compassionate because we're dealing with people. And so it is a, it's a balancing act that we have to weigh in when we look at the budget, because we're not going to get everything we want this year, but if we have, and as we do a two-year budget, maybe it comes in year two, or maybe we're preparing for it in year two, and it appears in year three. And so um, that is how my approach is, is, is looking at FTEs, looking at where pots of money are, and then putting it to work for our residents. Thank you. Um, and you've heard from, from the previous candidates already, uh, there are a number of complaints in the city about the delay in permitting, the issue involving crime, food deserts, homelessness, short-term rental regulations, oversight. Um, what specific areas do you have disagreement or you wish the city administration or mayor would go in a different direction? I think I'm the poster child for that one. No. Um, I think it was a, now a year ago, the, the city manager and I were at odds on how to handle permitting. I wanted it done expeditiously right then, right away. And there was a little bit of a tug at that. And um, as I do think we have made strides in the single family permitting situation. We have uh, unclogged the pipeline. We've got third party reviewers. But the commercial side is where we're going to have to focus now. Um, looking at all those things that you've listed, I tend to take a pragmatic approach to things. I mean, it's not all, it, it's, it's a, a lot of these things are dynamic. They change from year to year. And we have to work in the system that we have. That doesn't mean that can't be any, um, any disagreement or discord about it. But I think that we have to be intellectually honest about what is broken and how to fix it. And that's what I felt was not happening during permitting. I, I felt, as I think I said, I was being gaslighted. And I was like, do not tell me I'm making these things up. I know what I'm reading. I have emails and I have people telling me. And I think we're on a path forward. I'm just sad that it got to that point. And I mean, I, I think I've, what I think I, what I, if I believe in something, I'm going to fight for it, and I'm going to do the best job that I can, given the information that I have. It doesn't mean that anything's personal, and it doesn't mean that we can't revisit it in six months to look at it again, to say, hey, did we do this in the right way, and are we fixing it? Are we moving the needle? But, um, you know, a lot of times, uh, there's lots of noise and sometimes it gets really difficult. And sometimes you have to extract yourself from that and just go, what am I solving for and how can I do it? And uh, that's how I approach things as uh, going forward. Thank you. Um, you were my councilman for the last couple of terms and then they moved me into Jesse's district recently, which is odd because I'm the precinct chair now over two different city districts. Uh, but um, <laughs> I want you to address the uh, 
what you think of the special issues in your council place. And so I'll set you up a little bit here. I'm sorry, but uh, what everybody in your neighborhood comes to me and talks about is short-term rentals. Yes. Okay. So if you would address those particular issues. Why do I get a specific one that they did? <laughs> you don't know. Okay. So, um, and I'm glad Jeff is here because I've been using him as the example and I'm sorry that I'm doing it, but it comes to mind. We talk about neighbors. Okay, first of all, party houses, event venues, all of that uh, is not acceptable in neighborhoods. Not at all. No way we're going to have that. But we didn't look, I mean, multifamily is not even in the equation that we've been given. And owner-occupied, which you can't say owner-occupied, it must be 24-hour occupied, is not available too. I have Jeff Vesey here, who is a good neighbor. You've raised your boys in Old Lake Highlands. We've talked, what, three or four times? And we all know property taxes are only going up. I hate to say it. I'm working my darndest to keep them down but they are going to inch up. And so with that being said, people do have a back house, a extra room that they lease out, but they're there to augment that, that expense. And that's the Jeff Vesey solution. I'm trying to figure out the Jeff Vesey because mm -hmm. if we talk about neighbors, we want to keep neighbors in place. We don't want the Jeff Veseys to leave because you are a good neighbor. And that is my focus is, and so that's where I've looked at this. I've been talking about, is there an opt out? So if you ban them, can you opt out of the ban? How does that look as an individual, as a neighborhood? Is it that we put in a clause that says you have to have a 24 hour? I don't know what's going to come back from staff, but um, STRs is probably the most, I've been involved in a lot of policymaking decision. It is probably the most difficult I've ever been in. And I hate that we're here on this and it's unfortunate, but I'm not, uh, I took a hiatus from it for a year. I'll be honest. It got pretty darn noisy and pretty mean, uh, but I'm back engaged. And that is my, Jeff, you're my one focus. And I didn't plant him here just so you know. Um, <laughs> but I'm also focusing on dredging White Rock Lake. Uh, and we're working with our partners there to find funding. Uh, Colin Allred has been our champions at the federal level, so I'm very fortunate for that. Working at our state level uh, with Royce West and Nathan Johnson, uh, the, the, the state's not as in love with it as the feds are, but that's yet. We got to, you know, we'll finish this session. We won't need them hopefully till 2025, so I'm not going to give up on getting our federal partners uh, to figure out how they're participating in this. Um, speeding along our roadways, please slow down. We've had another fatality on Garland Road. I'm working with TxDOT, which is a good thing, and they are coming to the table, not only looking at traffic calming and mitigation, but also to put it back into the city portfolio because a state highway does not need to be in the middle of a city. So I have been working on that, and I, so I'm going to need you guys when the time comes. I know y'all helped Adam, 635. So I'm going to need you because uh, I'm going to let, you know, I want the state to tell me, no, we don't want to slow people down. Okay, then we know where you stand on this, and then we'll try another way. So with that, I hope to earn your vote. May uh, 6th, Election Day, April 24th, is early voting. Paula Blackman. Thank you for attending. I don't know to the place then. And I understand Mr. Baldeo is, uh, is on Zoom. Uh, I do not see him on Zoom. Okay. Uh, so there are four candidates for place 10. Uh, Kathy Stewart has declined to attend. Um, we have Mr. Parker, Mr. Hausenbar here. And Mr. Baldeo has indicated that he would appear by Zoom. We'll see if he uh, is in attendance. But we'll start off uh, if each of the candidates would introduce themselves. Mr. Carter. Hi. Yes. If it's, it's not working out, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Chris Carter. I am the conservative candidate for District 10, which is Lake Highlands and Hamilton Park. Uh, just across Northwest Highway. Um, I was raised in Lake Highlands. 
My family has lived there for 57 years. Uh, I attended Lake Highlands High School, graduated in 1981. Uh, I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin in 1985. I was on Wall Street in New York City for 23 years. And then I was in international investment sales for 10 years, uh, based out of Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Mexico City at various times. Uh, I am a fiscal conservative. I am pro-police and I am pro-life. Um, I was invited here uh, by Bruce and I appreciate that invitation. And I wanna make it clear to everyone that if elected, it will be my responsibility to represent everyone in the district, regardless of their political affiliation or their philosophical uh, political uh, affiliation. And I will take that responsibility very seriously. Thank you. Right. First, um, thank you to the Lake Highlands White Rock Democrats for having me out today. Um, I know there's a lot of familiar faces here, so it's great to see you. Um, I do want to extend a thank you to Chris for coming out. Um, I know it's difficult when you have some different views to come out to a group that has different values and different views um, that are represented. This is a nonpartisan race, but your partisan views should not be neglected. And I am the candidate that is endorsed by the Stonewall Democrats. I am the candidate that is endorsed by the Tejano Democrats, AFL-CIO, Happy Earth Day. I'm endorsed by the Sierra Club as well. And one of the other endorsements that I'm really proud of is Dallas Neighbors for Housing. So I was Adam Magoo's um, Community Development Commissioner for three terms where I was appointed to help figure out what to do with all the HUD money that we get to work with affordable housing and homelessness. So I am the resident expert that we have in the district appointed by our councilmen to tackle that issue. My background is I'm a financial analyst. I worked at EDS in the state local government department working on large contracts like Medicaid, which we should expand in Texas. I also worked on programs like Red Light Camera where I got to see some of the programs that didn't work very well. Um, but over the years of working at the city with the fellow council persons, with TC Broadnax, and with the financial department, I was able to help find money in that budget that helped us supplement our general fund. So we were able to support additional after school time um, childcare. We were able to increase the amount of neighborhood revitalization money that the city could. Um, put forth. So as Jesse Moreno said, we could let people age in place, fix their AC, fix their heating and things like that. So there wasn't gentrification. But one thing that I'm proud of in this race is that I'm telling you who I am. And I appreciate Chris for saying that as well. I am the Democratic candidate for this position, even though it's a nonpartisan race. But your trash doesn't care if you bleed red or bleed blue, your trash just wants to be picked up. And I wanna be the one that you call when you have an issue with that and get that resolved for you because we're all in this together. So thank you for your vote on May 6th. Thank you. Every candidate's got their items of concern they want the city to address. We've heard a lot of them, uh, police, housing. Uh, all these uh, concerns require money we need solutions and we don't have an uh, unlimited budget. How would you reprioritize the budget to accomplish your goals? We currently have a $4 billion hole in the police and firefighters pension fund. Rating agencies like Standard and Poor's and Moody's don't care how many diversity, equity, or inclusion programs the city has. They don't care if your convention center's roof is leaking, but they care about $4 billion in unfunded pension liabilities, and they care a lot. We are going to have to get this pension fund shored up with a plan by the end of the year this is going to require somewhere between 200 and 300 million dollars to come out of the city budget. That's going to be a knockdown drag out. But if we don't do it, 
We're going to get a debt downgrade, probably one to two notches. We're right now at double A, it could take us down to a triple B, which is right above junk, and we will have a negative outlook. If that happens, there will not be a 2024 bond because the credit markets, like they have in the commercial real estate market now, are going to freeze up on us. So this has to be addressed. It's got to be addressed right away as soon as we get a new city council. And it's going to be a very tough fight. But I'm the guy who's going to, who's going to fight that fight. And keep in mind, in a financial crisis, it doesn't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, conservative, or progressive liberal. We all get taken to the woodshed. Thank you. How would you reprioritize the budget? Great question. Thank you. Um, I think we have to look at what we need to focus on first, which is our priority. You know, it's been said that the budget indicates your values and your priorities. So when we look at the city budget right now, we know that we need to focus on public safety. We do have a deficit of police officers. And as Chris said, we do have a pension fund that we need to shore up. Police officers don't want to come work in Dallas because we don't pay them enough and they're not sure that they're going to have security in their, their old age and as they age. So as a endorsed candidate from the AFL-CIO, I support unions. I did not get the police union um, support, but we did have a great conversation about how to shore up their pension fund. One of the things we agreed on is that a pension bond is not the only answer. Pulling from the general fund is not the only answer. We need to look for other revenue streams, such as leasing out Love Field to a private entity and getting a revenue stream that can go into that. Or looking at how we can use our hotel, taxi, other types of funds that we get to allocate towards public safety. Look at Visit Dallas, if we could reduce that budget, we would actually increase tourism by having a safer city. So there's a lot of different places to find that, but we have to make sure we're focused on public safety, number one, because we can't do these other things that we need to do. We can't build more bike trails, which I've helped do in the city of Dallas. We can't fund affordable housing, which we need to do to get our homeless neighbors off the streets. If you are wanna see people not living under our bridges, and you say you are not for increasing the amount of mixed income and affordable housing, you don't understand the problem. We don't have places to put people that are in shelter, that are unsheltered. We need to build that shelter capacity. We need to build that affordable housing and we need to build the mental health and drug addiction clinics so they have a bed to go into. These are values. I value public safety. I value having um, our kids not shot on the streets. I value making sure we have safe apartments that we can live in in our neighborhood. But I'm an optimist. I believe we shouldn't say we can't do it and that we don't have the money. I say that we work together, put our pencils to the paper, and we figure out what we have to do to get this budget to work. Because if not, I don't think we're doing our job. We can't just throw our hands up in the air, say we don't have the money, and give up on you, the taxpayer. And you should also get a tax break. Thank you. Thank you. All right, as we've heard, um, there's a lot of problems um, of concern with the voters in the city. We've heard permitting, crime, homelessness, short-term rentals. I'd ask each candidate, uh, where do you have specific disagreement with city administration, city manager's office, and what, what would you change? Our city manager, T.C. Broadnax, is a career criminal, and we can't, and we can't fire him. The reason that this permitting process is being slow walked is because he wants a bigger piece of the graph. And this graph, as has been noted by some of the other candidates, is pervasive. Paula Blackman's top campaign contributor is Harlan Crow and his family. Yes, that Harlan Crow, Clarence Thomas Harlan Crow. That's influence peddling. And this in turn is attracting. A lot of these slimy political operatives, like a Mark Melton, like a Philip Kingston, and like a Jay Pritchard. 
We have to put a stop to this across the board because what this is doing is it's, it's killing our voter turnout because people have an attitude that the city's gotten so corrupt that their vote doesn't matter. And when we have less than 10% voter turnout, nothing good's gonna happen. So this has to be changed. They tried to fire TC Broadmax back in August. Gay Willis from District 13 was sent to his office to give him the consideration of a resignation. And the stories I've heard is he laughed her out of his office. If elected, if I get that assignment to fire TC Broadnax, I'm going to finish the job. Brian, what, uh, what complaints permitting someone homelessness, uh, short term rentals? You, okay. What uh, uh, the issues have you had permitting uh, short term rentals? Crime. Uh, where do you think the city manager's office should take it to, uh, a different direction? Where where your current uh, disagreements with the administration? Thank you. Um, that was the exact question that the Dallas Morning News asked me recently, and the answer I gave them. I did a little research first because um, I wanted to make an educated answer. And what I did is I went to the city website and searched Dallas City Manager Audit. And what do you find when you do that? You find a document from 2017, I believe, which is one, two, three, four, five years ago. So the last time we actually did a formal audit of our city manager was five years ago. Do you get a performance review at your job? Are you told by the shareholders if you're a CEO of a company how you're doing and you're given that performance review? The follow-up question was, what would you do to change the city charter? Well, I believe in the city charter, it should have the city manager needs a review every year by the city council and their third party independent auditor. So that way we know if they're corrupt, that way we know if the programs are working efficiently and effectively. Now I have a different view than Chris Carter on government. I don't believe like Keith Balgado believes also that everyone's corrupt and there's a bunch of people out there just for their own grift. I personally believe that having worked with city staff, that their hearts are good and they're doing their best with what we give them. But sometimes we give them really bad processes, we give them really bad systems and really bad regulations. So as a council person, my focus will be on that permitting process because that is the number one thing that TC Broadnax needs to get fixed as Paula Blackman said. You know, Ross Perot said years ago, you know, that sucking sound is all the jobs going to Mexico because of NAFTA and all that. No, the sucking sound you hear now, it's all of the development going to Frisco. So Dallas cannot be competitive and we cannot increase our tax revenues and our budget if we do not fix this permitting problem. Because we can't build apartments fast enough, we can't build houses fast enough, and we can't build our economic engine of businesses fast enough. And architects, designers, construction workers, they've, they've told me in meetings, we just don't want to work with Dallas. It doesn't work. So I've worked at big companies. I get the systems. I worked at a um, supply chain management company, one of the largest in the world. So I get how businesses work and how systems can be broken. But unlike my, com my competitors, I have faith in our city government and believe that it can be the solution to your problems if we put trusted advisors and people that truly believe in the government and aren't against it. So I wanna work for you, I wanna make this work. I don't wanna tear it down and start firing everyone. I wanna make it work for you, the taxpayer. If not, as a shareholder in the city of Dallas, you need to get a tax refund, thank you. Thank you. Okay, finally, I'd ask the candidates, uh, what do you think the most significant issues that especially affect place 10? What are the most uh, significant issues that have impact place 10 that need to be addressed? Okay, first, I just want to stress that I am not for firing everyone. Okay, we the, the city hall staff, most of them are superb, especially Billy Ray Johnson, the city secretary, who I work with all the time, Carl Simpson, head of uh, Dallas Animal Services. And sanitation, 
and you know quite a few others. The rot is at the top. So let's be really clear on that. The biggest problem we have in District 10 is out of control apartment building that the homeowners and residents have no say in what's going on. Kathy Stewart, our opponent who's not here today, was responsible for getting a development at the Lake Highlands Dart Station of apartments. No one in White Rock Valley where I live, around White Rock Elementary, was given any notice of any kind of a meeting. They're supposed to give 30 days notice, and there was none because there was no meeting. Now she's trying to put apartments up at the North Lake Shopping Center, and it's going to be the same situation. Part of the problem here, we don't have the infrastructure, the, the roads to handle the traffic that's going to be coming out of these apartment complexes. This one over the Lake Highlands Dark is at Skillman and Walnut, and right across Walnut, they're building, and the old Hollywood Door Company, they're building a lot of single family residences that are all going to come out on the White Rock Trail, which is a two lane road. You can't get through those lights at White Rock Trail, Walnut, and Fieldcrest and Walnut in the morning, and it's only going to get worse. But had they tried to widen White Rock Trail beforehand, as should have been done, it would have tipped everybody off as to what was going on. So we have to put a stop to this. If elected, I will put a two-year moratorium on any apartment building in District 10. Zero, none. We have a full plate that we need to digest, and that's going to take at least two years. But the homeowners, the residents, the long term residents, they're going to be the ones making the decision, not some small development cartel like we have currently. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, what are the <clears throat> most significant issues facing place town? Well, at Oak Highlands Brewery the other night, we had a, a great candidate discussion, and um, it was pointed out that we've had a student murdered down the street from Lake Highlands High School. And my son didn't go to school that day because he was scared. We've also had apartments that have had incidences at those apartments. So public safety should be number one on everyone's list. Because like I said before, if you don't have public safety, if you don't cover your basics, you're not gonna be able to do anything else and you're not gonna have businesses move here and you're not gonna have residents want to live here. However, I know homelessness is a big issue in Lake Highlands. At 75, 635 um, in our uh, parks and recreation places, we need to address that. I'm the only one that's actually been on a commission that is focused on that. And I think that should be one of the things that we focus on. I don't agree that we can't have apartments in Lake Highlands. We were just at the exchange club the other day and there's the beautiful new luxury flats apartments. However, there are problems with that. There is parking on the street that needs to not be there and there's other issues. But just similar to, to Chris, I'm a little bit more of an optimist and think that you know we can chew gum and walk at the same time. So I do believe we can have mixed income housing in our neighborhood. We can redevelop broken down shopping malls that are falling into disrepair and create something better than what's already there. We need a redevelopment plan for North Lake and I've said that for a long time, but we also need to respect the neighbor's wishes and we need to respect the, the tenant's wishes like Rooster Hardware. But we can build something that reflects what the neighborhood wants. And we should not have a small group of individuals, including Kathy Stewart, making those decisions behind the neighbor's backs. We need to have more public participation, have that participation in advance. I was federally mandated as a vice chair of the Community Development Commission Citizen Participation Committee to make sure the citizen feedback was included in everything we did. We weren't allowed to make decisions without citizen <laughs> feedback that was advertised in the Dallas Morning News. So we had to get that citizen feedback. I wanted expanded citizen feedback, so we turned to social media to include social media comments. And this is the first time that I was ever told that was done in the city of Dallas, that people commenting on a Facebook post are next door 
if they used a hashtag, it was cataloged into what they wanted for the city budget and what they wanted for these programs. So we need to keep our neighborhoods safe. We need to make sure we don't have um, STRs. We need homes, not short-term rentals. We also need to make sure our apartments are safe. We need to work with those good apartment owners to show that they are leading the way. And we need to use every tool that the city has, code enforcement, community prosecutors, and abatement to get rid of bad apartment owners and make sure that we're living in a safe community. So we can do things like build bike trails, increase our rec center usage and increase our library hours and live in a place that we all want to live in. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Place 14 is next. Is Mr. Ridley, has Mr. Ridley arrived yet? Uh, I, uh, he told me that he had another um, meeting to go for before he got here and he thought he would be here by 11. So uh, I'm going to give him just a minute. Mr. Miller's here and Amanda Schultz. All right. So uh, I think, though, while we're waiting to, for Mr. Ridley, we have a special presentation, do we? Okay. Doug Scamp. What? Doug? Where'd he go? He was just here. He went out the door. Doug? <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah. Well, also, I see we have another a candidate not in this race, but if you'd like to take a minute to uh, speak. Okay. I would love to speak. <laughs> How y'all doing this morning? <clears throat> I'm Kendall Richardson. I am a, <clears throat> can you hear me? Get this way. Yeah. I am a writing candidate for um for the mayor's office, so he is not un run, technically running unopposed, which the media has has had um, that I really had to work through. Um, I'm really running to making sure that the voices of Dallas's are finally heard. The reason why people don't come out to vote is because they feel that their voices aren't being heard voices of the seniors, voices of the children, voices of parents, voices of black and brown communities that they, they say things, they come and do, but some of the leadership does not listen to the people and some of their constituents. That's why there's a lot of issues and problems that continue to plague the city of Dallas. And I am also a Democrat. Um, even though it's a nonpartisan race, I'm a Democrat because I believe in dealing with people. Um, and the difference between the administration that you have now and you have for me is that I show up, I listen, and I also do. I call and email cities, city council <clears throat> all the time for trash, debris. The 311 issues, it's a lot of issues. And you expect seniors and different people in the cities to be able to, to call 31 and do that when it's hard for me to even be able to do. So we have to have, find solutions to the problems. And number one is definitely homeless. And the only way this um, shelter stuff, it ain't working. So we have to have um, uh, affordable, um, not affordable because they keep using that word. I'm just so tired of what does affordable even mean when it comes to housing. But we need uh, permanent supportive housing in this city for the people that don't have homes. So I just <clears throat> wanted to say those little things, but you do have a another option other than the current administration who does not show up, who does not come to your meetings, who does not speak to you, who does not come for you, um, but we all know that this administration is allowing um, businesses to come in this city who is not invested with the people in the city. The leadership continues to let um, people come into the city that don't have anything to do with this city for housing, 
mixed income, whatever. These people keep coming in our city. We do not have an investment in our city. And the people of our city are not um, being invested in. And that's what I, I come to do in the city, to invest in the people and take it back to the basics and grow the people in the city of Dallas instead of the businesses that are coming in and taking over and moving the people out. Thank you. Doug, come on up. Doug Scam. <laughs> You're about to find out. What you did. Everybody probably knows, but this is Doug Scamp, who was president last year. And we're just now getting around to do honoring him and thanking him for the job he had. And it was a tough choice. I know that Doug is a lifelong Cubs fan, and there's nothing more appropriate than a beer glass and a big supply of beer. <laughs> I just want to tell everyone uh, it was a joy being president. Uh, it's kind of weird circumstances, uh, kind of sad circumstances under which that happened, but uh, I was glad to fill in last year when uh, we needed someone. I enjoyed it. I've been a part of this club since it began, I don't know, 30 years ago or so. And uh, it's, it's a great bunch of people, and uh, I will continue to support this club because it's a great place to be on Saturday morning. Thank you. I'm holding out a diminishing hope that Mr. Ridley will arrive, but in, in the interim, we have a, a, another candidate present for place 14, and that's Joseph Miller. Mr. Miller, would you take the opportunity to introduce yourselves? Good morning. My name is Joseph Miller. Now remember that Miller because it's Miller time for a change, right? We need to change the incumbent from I'm from District 14. Things need a change. Why am I what about a little bit about myself? I am a professional electrical engineer licensed in the state of Texas. I used to be licensed in seven other states, but uh, I've retired now, so no need for those licenses, but I keep my Texas license. Uh, some of you maybe get the accent and you're saying in your heads, oh, he's from West Texas. <laughs> Not true. Not true. I was born educated in Scotland, and uh, Scotland as you know, has got a reputation for being a bit on the thrifty side. And that's true. That is absolutely true. Uh, but I came to the United States in 1978. I'm obviously an American citizen now. Uh, you know the saying that they say that I didn't, uh, wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as quick as I can. Uh, but I've traveled, my, my speciality is in uh, transit and uh, electric, especially electric trains. I've worked, worked on with in San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico. My wife, by the way, was from Puerto Rico. She's dead now, unfortunately. Boston, St. Louis, and I'm back in Dallas for my second time in Dallas. Dallas. I love Dallas. All the places I've lived in, Dallas is my favorite. I really love Dallas. Uh, when I first came here in the early 1990s, Dallas was a completely different place. You could, you could, my wife and I, we could go to Deep Ellum and, and get a nice meal. At Christmas time, we could go downtown and, and look at Neiman Marcus and look at the, the, uh, I, the windows that were there. We could go to the American Airlines Center without coming to uh, coming back and finding someone that stole your catalytic converter. There's a lot of things have gone wrong in Dallas. And that's where 
I've got the experience from all other parts of the United States. I know what worked and what didn't work. And as I said, I've got that experience. The incumbent here, Paul Ripley, he's lived here for 30 years. And in that 30 years, this quality of life in Dallas has, has diminished. So that's the reason I'm sort of, uh, I'm standing, because I can, I, I think I can help uh, put Dallas back on the right track. Uh, from my experience in railroads, if you, if you put a train on the wrong, wrong track, uh, you know, things are going to get catastrophic. And I think that's what's happening. Dallas is gradually uh, going downhill. All right, thank you. We have the uh, later, we have the late arriving Paul Ridley just walking in the door. Come on up. Morning. Morning. Um, I just uh, asked Mr. Miller to introduce himself. If you would also take a few minutes to introduce yourself. Sure. Good morning, everyone. I'm Paul Ridley. I am the incumbent in District 14, and I'm running for re-election in the May 6th election. I have uh, just completed my first term on the council after serving eight years on the City Plan Commission and four years on the Landmark Commission before that. My priorities are neighborhoods, public safety, parks, the environment, and affordable housing. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to elaborate on those priorities in a few minutes. Thank you. Um, we forgot, obviously, we prepared a list of questions for the candidates, starting with Mr. Miller. Um, there are issues the city needs to address. Uh, how would you reprioritize the city budget? What would you spend money on or cut back as a thrifty Scot? Yeah, you mentioned being a thrifty Scot. I was two, two years uh, on my HO, a homeowners association. And during that two years, we never had any increases in the, the homeowners uh, assessments. After I left, two, the last two years, the homeowners association fees have risen 20%. And how could that, how did we avoid that? Because the thrifty score, I was watching every penny that was in the budget. But anyhow, uh, the items that I have concern about People to talk about homeless, but really it's affordable housing. I think you've got to start from the bottom and work your way up. People, the rents have risen dramatically in, in the, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, people that have lived there, paid their rent, worked two or three jobs, they no longer can afford to, to keep living in those, those apartments. Uh, so affordable housing needs to be addressed. Right. We don't have a... The, 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 Paul, uh, I've heard him before talking and a previous candidate says that, that oh, we're going to get 250 more police. We're 600 officers short. So what's, where's this 250 from? And I've also heard they say, well, Paul's turned around and say, at previous meeting says, well, we're trying everywhere. We're looking all over the United States for officers. Well, aye, very good. But why is it not working? Why are they not coming to Dallas? Because either we're not paying them enough, we're not backing them enough. Uh, they just don't see a, a, a progress. Are they going to get a promotion? The, the budget, the police budget is, is terrible. They're, they're, you know that. I mean, you know what other candidates have said that I don't need to repeat all that. They're millions and millions of dollars short on their pension. That's not right. You're not going to attract police equipment. They want to have good equipment. Their cars shouldn't be a load of junkers out there. They need to have the give them the tools, as Winston Churchill said. Give us the tools and we'll finish the job. The other thing is, and I know it's, it's dark, but we need to have integrated transportation system. With people that 
for affordable housing. They're moving out of Dallas because they can't afford an apartment here anymore. And what are they doing? They're either paying a few months ago, it was five dollars for a gallon of gas, or they're having to pay a fare to get back into the city to work. That's not right. We should have a house in here for them, and the, the transportation system should be, you know, affordable to them. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Ridley, uh, the, the city has a lot of problems and needs solutions. Solutions cost money. How would you reprioritize re the budget to accomplish your goals? Well, first of all, to address the issue of public safety, we currently spend a billion dollars, that's billion with a B, on public safety. We have given as the council every dime to DPD that they have asked for. We haven't cut their budgets. We've added funding for not just 250 officers. That's just this budget year. We added 250 for last year's budget as well. That's a total of 500 officers. There is no shortage of funding of DPD. There may still be a shortage of police officers, and that's because it's very difficult to hire them. That's why we are scouring the country to go to other police forces to find officers who will find better conditions and more support here in Dallas. And that's what the DPD recruiters say is come to Dallas because our people and our council supports the police officers. Now, in addition to the uh, importance of public safety, I believe it's also important that we not overtax our residents. Currently, many people are experiencing escalation in the value of their home for tax purposes. I fully supported the largest tax rate reduction in 40 years in this year's budget, which is a recognition that our taxpayers whether they be owners or renters, need relief from high taxes. Now, that uh, we are blessed with a strong economy in Dallas and strong economic development, which is also increasing the sales tax revenue that we receive. But one of the things that I would like to reduce is our corporate subsidies. When a company in Dallas says, oh, well, we're thinking about moving to Plano. Why don't you give us a few million dollars to induce us to stay where we are? I'm sorry, when that's a wealthy public corporation, we don't need to be paying them so they can keep their office in Dallas because likely or not, they are going to stay in Dallas anyway. I've seen several instances of that. We should only be using subsidies, public subsidies, to achieve public good such as building of affordable housing, uh, incentivizing developers to build mixed income housing so that we have a place for our moderate income people, our school teachers, our police officers, our firemen, have a place to live that's a decent uh, place to live near where they serve our city. So I'm a big proponent of programs to subsidize affordable housing. Um, in addition, I think we need to put more money into our effort against the homeless uh, problem. We have many programs now, but we need to ensure that there is sufficient funding for permanent supportive housing so that we can get the homeless off the streets and into decent housing combined with wraparound services, which means the social services that will make them independent once again, job training, mental health uh, issues, addressing maybe physical ailments, uh, so that they can be productive members of our community again. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Miller, um, there are a lot of complaints we, we've heard this morning about the delay in permitting, homeless problem, crime. Uh, where, do you, what, where do you specifically disagree with the, the current city administration, the city manager's office? Now, what what should what they what should they be doing differently that they're not doing now? Well, if you look at the city manager's office, two particular items: the homeless. You go downtown, they're, they're sleeping in all the boarded up. Uh, it used to be a nice place to go downtown, uh, but these places are boarded up, and the homeless are sleeping in the doorways, and also the crime. The, especially the, the Deep, Alum, Deep Elum district. The city manager, or sorry, President uh, Biden 
his salary is $400,000 a year. $400,000 a year. And he's like the leader of the free world. Our city manager in Dallas, his salary is $430,000. He's getting $30,000 more than President Biden's getting. And look at the place. The homeless, the crime, delays and and getting permits out hey that speaks for itself yep. it does a couple of things i i am independent by the way i don't owe any allegiance to any political party or any donors i'm completely financing this on myself i'm allowed to spend one thousand and ten dollars i don't know where the ten dollars came from but that's what i'm spending Paul last showed up, he's got about $83,000. And Amanda has got $53,000. Who's paying this guy? Who's paying him? <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Thank you. Mr. Ridley, um, you, you missed some of the earlier discussion, but permitting is a big issue. Short term rentals is a big issue. Crime's been a big issue. Uh, where would where do you disagree with the direction the city management is city manager's office administration is going? Well, you've mentioned three very important issues. Uh, first of all, our crime rate is actually down two years in a row for violent crime. We're the only one of the ten largest cities in the country that have reduced crime, violent crime that is, two of the last two years. This year to date, we're down another approximately ten percent. So our policing is really effective. It's making our community safer. Now, with respect to the other issues, short-term rentals is a very important issue in my district and throughout the city. We are now um, blessed with 5,000 short-term rentals in the city. And what that's doing to our communities is very damaging. First of all, it's introducing strangers into our neighbors. We don't know who they are. They're here one day, they're gone the next. Many times it has been reported that they bring crime to our neighborhoods, drug dealing, prostitution, because they think they are in refuge from uh, the visibility of DPD because DPD can't find them. They're moving from neighborhood to neighborhood. In addition, they're robbing us of housing stock. We are in a tremendous shortage of affordable housing in the city. That's partly why house values have gone up so much because the demand exceeds the supply. Well, if we could put those 5,000 SDRs back into circulation as permanent housing for people who want to live here, not just tourists, we would put a huge dent into our affordable housing crisis. Now, in addition, uh, you mentioned the permit problem. It has been a problem. And you asked where I differ from city management. Well, first on short-term rentals, they are not taking decisive action. They're trying to kick the can down the road. And I'm against that. I've been resisting that for months now. In addition, the permit issue, they were very late to identify that as a serious problem and do something about it. In the last year, they finally paid attention to it. We have hired over 30 new code uh, building permit staff. We also have just let a contract for new software. We were using a totally antiquated software system that wasn't efficient. Now we will be getting a whole new software system to address that. We also brought in new leadership to change the course of that department to be more customer oriented. All of those were reforms that we needed years ago. We were late to the game, and we've laid that at the feet of the city manager. Thank you. Um, finally, Mr. Miller, uh, you will be representing 14 if elected. What do you think are the most significant issues that, uh, to deal with in that area? Well, I do agree with uh, what Paul says about the, uh, the affordable housing. We definitely need to, to work on, on that. The other thing is about uh, short-term rentals. I'm completely against that. What was it? I've seen the T-shirts, uh, homes, not hotels. 
definitely against short term rentals for the reasons that, that Paul uh, mentioned. The other thing is about uh, the permitted the permits. Uh, what I've been hearing all morning with the other candidates, they all come up with so uh, they've realized that something's not working and, and they need to fix it. As an engineer, that's not what, how I work. I look ahead. I use my experience, my uh, education, and my training to look ahead and get the get the look at the problems that are, that could come up and stop it. Stop the, the 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 problems occurring. Completely different from what the other candidates have been saying. That oh well, we're going to fix this and we're going to fix that. Why is it taking them so long to, like Paul said, to find out that the software was, was so old? The other thing is about, uh, I was taught that, I found from my experience working as a consultant with DART, that when there's so much red tape involved, really good contractors would not come and, and bid on jobs for DART because they, they Time is money. They could see that things were going to take too long, and we didn't. And when I say we, Dart didn't get the best contractors uh, for the job. So there need to be a, a, an oversight of what contractors are going to get get the, the, the position, so that there's no backhanded payments or anything like that. And also, what they say that the the uh, the contract that they were they're being given. We need to give somebody that looks through that and, and make sure that there's nothing in that that's uh, going to cause problems. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ridley, what do you think are the most uh, important issues that significantly affect 14? Issues that affect our quality of life in District 14. I've already spoken about the threat that SDRs pose to the quiet enjoyment of our neighborhoods. Another issue that I've been not all SDRs. Excuse me. This is not a question and answer session. We're interrupting the candidates. Thank you, sir. Let's have some. Let's have some decorum, please. May I respond, please? Pick up your certified mail. Look, if you don't want me here, I'll leave. Good. Then let me speak, please. Thank you. May I have some additional time? Absolutely. Thank you. As I was saying, um, in addition to the short-term rental problem, we've also had a problem with late night venues, bars that are situated on the edge of some of our neighborhoods. Greenville Avenue is an example of that. There were two bars in particular there that were causing problems. Noise, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, uh, drunks staggering into neighborhoods, gunshots in the middle of the night. I closed one of those bars, OT Tavern, and I'm working on closing the other one for the peace and stability of that neighborhood. In addition, we have significant investment needs in our district, and these I will push to see addressed in our 2024 bond issue. What are those? They're improvement in our streets. Everybody wants better streets. We're going to put hundreds of millions of dollars into street repair and reconstruction. Another one is flood prevention. There are areas of District 14 that flood when we get a 100-year rainstorm. That's not right. We should address that, and we are addressing it with our flood prevention programs, including the Mill Creek Tunnel, which is currently under construction. In addition to that, we also need to address the issue of um, the uh, condition of our facilities, our city-owned facilities. Many of them have had deferred maintenance. For example, the uh, Dallas Museum of Art, which is city owned, has years of deferred maintenance. Other institutions in the arts district are also suffering from deferred maintenance. So we need to put millions of dollars into the bond in order to catch up and to preserve their accessibility to Dallas residents and to people who come to Dallas to visit those uh, institutions. They produce almost a billion dollars of economic benefit to the city. If we don't invest money in them, then that income is going to drop off. We need to prevent that through appropriate investments. Thank you. 
Uh, I'd like to thank all the candidates for appearing this morning. Um, why don't we take about a 10 minute break before we uh, pick up club business so that there can be a little mix and mingle before we adjourn. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to say, 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 I'
Club members, let's get started with the business meeting in about a minute, okay? Thank you. 
All right, if everybody will take a seat, let's take up the remaining plot business, please. How loud do I need to be? Okay, let's have a seat and take up the remaining club business. Yes, ma'am. I have to eat a mic like this. Doesn't taste good. Okay. All right, let's call the meeting back to order. Uh, before we get started, uh, Kathy Stewart was not here today, but one of the uh, uh, members of the audience had a concern that he was willing, wanted to address. And I, I told him I would give him a minute. Hey, can everybody hear me right now? Uh, Kathy Stewart was not here at the meeting today. Um, she's the candidate for District 10. And I want to make it clear that there's been some misunderstanding out there as Kathy presenting as a Democrat. She's a member of Lake Highlands Blue. And when I started doing canvassing for Brian, um, I was hit with the fact that it is the given the impression that many, a lot of people in White Rock Valley and in our Lake Highlands Blue area that she is a Democrat. Both Brian and Kathy as progressive candidates. That is not true. And I want to say that um, we've given them a pass on this. And as Democrats, I want us to understand that we vote on values. This is a nonpartisan race, but you do not give up your values um, in these nonpartisan things. So I, I was going to ask if she's she's got every Republican hard-nosed uh family in, in uh, Lake Highlands has got her sign out there and a lot of Democrats because they believe she's a Democrat. That is not true. In the last three election cycles, she and her husband both voted in the Republican primary and the runoff. Those two races included the governor, lieutenant governor, and AG. When it comes to city issues and county issues, who is coming after us in Dallas County, Bear County, in Harris County. It's the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the AG who will sue, do whatever they can to change the way that we vote and how we can manage a health hype crisis like mask mandates. Um, you have to have values. And I've, I've run to people and said, I like Kathy. It's a two way race between, let you know, between Brian and Kathy. The other two candidates are pretty far out there. And this is a democratic meeting, so I can speak like this. Um, I think that if there's a candidate choice between two candidates, one of them is a Democrat that we can trust and believe in, we should back that candidate. Yeah. Okay. We need to give a pass to someone who is trying to pretend to be a Democrat and also on their campaign flyers say that. Her top endorsers are the top brass of the Lake Highlands Republican leadership. The four past city council members, the current one is trying to hand off to her, and the current one, Adam Magoo, it is a nonpartisan position. And I think Brian and anybody else that serves on that uh, in that position will serve as a nonpartisan but a city interest candidate and office holder. But when when you when you do what, what we're doing here. She's playing it both ways. And ladies and gentlemen, you can't do that. Um, they're going to come after us from the state. Who's she going to stand with? Those other two candidates are probably going to be with the governor the a and the AG. And when it comes down to LGBTQ rights, the city council has voted on some of those things that, that directly impact that. And they also have voted on women's rights. When it was decided in the city council that we were the Dallas, as a, count, as a local community, would not prosecute women who attempted to get an abortion. 
But Adam McGoo was the lone vote, as I understand it, to say, no, they should be arrested. And then I think Kathy Stewart said, well, it's the law. We should go after them. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the, coming down the pike, we should have made this an issue the last time. We wouldn't have done as poorly as we did. But personhood for fertilized eggs and zygotes is coming. And some of us just don't realize it. But we have to be prepared, and we have to start voting our values. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Okay, on the clock business, the president's report. He's not here. That's my report. Uh, Lisa Nashville. Uh, Nashville, I think, taking care of uh, a family wedding, I think. I'm, but anyway, personal family fair. So the vice president's report. Uh, next month is the picnic. Uh, and I think there's sign-up sheets in the back still. People want to volunteer uh, building up and taking down and bringing food. Uh, we have a couple of legislators lined up for the June meeting to talk about the uh, legislative session that just happened. It's my intention in July uh, to address some of the educational issues. So that's in the near future. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over. Is there a secretary's report? I believe she's not here today. How about money in the treasury? We have some. And we've been trying to get rid of it. Like I said. I said last month. Um, so my report as the treasurer, I'm Tim Sexton. We had an income. Uh, this report is for the month of March because we're we're into April. That March was the last month we completed. Our income was three hundred fifty five dollars. Our expenses were five hundred and seventy two dollars and fifty six cents. That's left us with a balance at the end of the month of $6,766.19, which I know is a lot of money and we're working on spending it on behalf of Democrats and the Democratic Party in Dallas County. Uh, another thing I wanted to report to you on is that the, our, bylaws, um, our bylaws require an audit uh, by, by members of the club, not, not an audit that is officially done by a professional, but members of the club, so I have scheduled that for, for May. We have to have it done by May. I don't think we'll have it done by the picnic, but um, the three people that have volunteered to do the audit on the committee are number one, and the most impactful will be Susie Wills. Susie is our treasurer emeritus. She set up our whole finance um, system for our club and is very familiar with it. So I'm, I'm happy that Susie was available to serve on the committee. Next is Al Ortiz, uh, who is a longtime club member, and Carl Zimler, past president of the club, and uh, frequently attends. That meeting, like I said, would be in May. I also have completed, during the month, our Texas Ethics Commission report. We're a PAC, and as uh, uh, because of that status, we have to do monthly reports to the Texas Ethics Commission. That outlines all of our income and our outgo, and it's a requirement to do that monthly. It's been done, and it's been done on time. Any questions? Okay, see none. thank you. Thank you, sir. Member report. Let's see, how's everybody doing this morning? Right. <laughs> I love this, I love this candidate. Uh, and I just want to go up to the mic. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm loud. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a good speech at uh, my brother's. I just lost my one and only baby brother. Oh and I've been asked to uh, get out and talk. And you know, I used to talk in front of three, 400 people. I'm going to find this harder to do, a lot harder than I ever had. And speaking to masses, I just had to say that. Um, thank you for the forum today. Uh, I've had four or five people give me some checks today. This is great. Uh, we're down to about 173 members. Uh, so I like to keep it around 200. Uh, we're down to about 173. Look at you. 
um, music because I talk too loud. No, is that better? Okay. We're down to about 173 people. Okay, and so I'd like to get that back up. Now, a lot of the folks that have dropped off, y'all, uh, a lot of times with candidates, they come and join our club and then that's it. We never hear from them again. Uh, so, and we've had some folks move away. Now, what I'm also doing is I'm working through giving each person on that list a personal phone call, just to say, you owe some dues, are you, are you with us, are you moved away, you know, were you a candidate once upon a time? So anyway, so I am going to give each one of you a call I'm about halfway through the list, okay? So please give me a little chance to do that, and uh, thank you all. I love this club. I, I do love this club. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Go right ahead. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. It's still morning. Uh, I'm Karen with activities and events. I have two events to talk to you about. The first one is this Tuesday, April 18th. We are doing our happy hour at Lachlan's Irish Pub. Lachlan's Irish Pub on Plano Road, which is off of Northwest Highway, kind of the intersection of um, Northwest Plano Road and Lake Highlands. So you would go north on Plano Road. There's a Kroger store on the hill on your left and Lachlan's will be across the street. We started five. We're going to be outdoor in the open area. And Lachlan's happy hour goes until six o'clock. That includes a variety of appetizers, beer, uh, wine, and cocktail at discount prices. So Tuesday, April 18th, five o'clock, Lachlan's Irish Pub. Come join us for some good food, fellowship, and just enjoy some really nice weather, hopefully, uh, outdoors, Tuesday, April 18th. Next month, May, we will not have a meeting here at C.C. Young. We'll have on our casual clothes and meet at Flagpole Hill, for our annual picnic. The picnic starts at 11, goes until one o'clock, a Lake Islands White Rock picnic, Blackpool Hill, May 20th. The club will provide hot dogs, buns, drinks. So we're asking you to come Bring a side dish, a dessert, your smile, and there are some sign-up sheets in the back uh, to say what you would like to bring with a contact uh, number. I will be glad to give you a call or an email just to remind you that you have signed up for a dessert or a side dish um, because there will be no meeting between now and the picnic. If anybody is so inclined to come a little early, we could use some help setting up for the picnic so you would come at 10 o'clock instead of 11 
And if you are so gracious to be able to stay a little after the picnic and help clean up, we would greatly appreciate that. There's also a sign-up sheet in the back to say you're coming to help set up or you're staying to clean up. So mark your calendar, May 20th. 11 to 1 flagpole hill the picnic if anybody would like some directions to lachlan's irish pub on plano road come see me i've got some directions so you can be sure and get there five o'clock this coming tuesday good program this morning thank you bruce Any other committee reports? Any other committee reports? Okay. Uh, is there any old or new business to take up? There's no, their secretary's here, so there's no minutes to approve. So I guess at this time, then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second? I second. Unless there's any opposition, we're adjourned. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs>